Hello everyone, my name is Alexandra Greenberg and thank you for joining the Insight into Wellness podcast. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Shannon Curtis. She is a naturopathic, naturopathic doctor and Shannon and I are gonna be discussing choosing a naturopathic doctor. Shannon is a registered ND, holistic pelvic floor therapist and Maya abdominal therapy practitioner. Shannon views symptoms as the body's attempt to communicate when it is imbalanced and like nature is wise and will heal itself given the right conditions. She supports you while you do the healing. Her passion is helping people reconnect to nature and to themselves so they can reclaim health and vitality, experience more energy and joy and feel more engaged with their life. Shannon, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Alexandra. Thank you. I'm really grateful to be here and glad you asked me on your show. Yeah, um, you were one of my doctors and we did some work together that we'll talk about kind of um, in just a little bit, uh, but it was really amazing that you are here and sharing your wisdom. So thank you so much. Um, I like to start most of my conversations by asking about your relationship with holistic health and natural healing when you were a kid, if, if it was existing or if it wasn't existing and what that was like for you. Not at all. It did not exist at all during my childhood. I'd like to say I was, you know, that kid that grew up in the forest playing with herbs. And I think that's like my romantic idealism of what my life would have been like. But no, my parents were incredible, super amazing parents, but I was raised in the total Western conventional allopathic sense. I mean, I got sore throats like several times a year and every time I got it, there was an antibiotic, you know, cough mm -hmm. suppressants every time I was sick. Mm -hmm. You know, I took pain relievers for every pain and ill. And so I was really just kind of pumped full of pharmaceuticals starting at a young age. And I think the closest my parents got to holistic medicine was, I think one time they gave me like this homeopathic eye drop for a sty that I had. And mm -hmm. I don't even think they knew it was homeopathic. They probably just found it at Walgreens and was like, mm -hmm. this, um, but it worked. So I didn't even, you know, years later, I was like, what was that eye drop? And I turned mm -hmm. homeopathic. That was pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, I I mean, that was that was my childhood, you know, growing up until I kind of made a total mindset change around how I wanted to interact with medicine in my life. And I mean, you know, even growing up, nutrition, like food as medicine wasn't a thing. I was the kid that ate Wendy's three times a week and you know, French fries and freezer meals and everything. And my parents were fantastic, but that wasn't one of their yeah. strong suits. Yeah. Yes, we love our parents. <laughs> they could, and what they knew. Yeah. And so you you kind of mentioned there was like this big mind shift. What happened? What led you on this path of rediscovering your connection to nature and your connection to your body? Absolutely. So I was really sick in undergrad. I left right after um, high school to go to college, and I started experiencing a lot of symptoms. Um, now being older and wiser, I can trace it back to, you know, when I was a senior in high school, I went on birth control to regulate really heavy, irregular menses, very painful. And the doctors were like, you know, here's your script for the pill. Okay, why not? I'll try it. A few months after starting the pill, I started developing severe depression, like couldn't get out of bed, crying all the time. And as a senior in high school, everyone just thought like, oh, you're nervous to like go to college. Like you're just experiencing changes that everyone around you is experiencing. But um, I got put on antidepressants, you know, when I was like 17 and I continued those through undergrad and I didn't respond well to them. And I was continuing to not respond well to the birth control. And I was thrown every single antidepressant you can think of. And my symptoms only got worse. And when I was an undergrad, I got really you know, suicidal. I was not feeling well. And I just was like, something's, something's not working. And, you know, I, I felt like the pills they kept giving me every time I went in, I was like, do you have something else? Like, you're just going to give me a different kind. Is that really the answer? If this one didn't work, if that one didn't work. If these 10 other ones didn't work. Is this 11th one going to work? Yeah. And so at that point, you know, I started kind of questioning the paradigm, questioning, you know, what was causing my symptoms, how I could feel better. And I was hanging out with a group of friends at the time that were really into herbalism. And I don't mean cannabis. I mean like all types of herbalism mm -hmm. and they got me into kava drinking. You ever had kava? Before? No, I've heard of it and there's places all over. I just haven't tried it yet. 
Yeah, it's amazing. So the Latin name is Piper methysticum, and it's the root of a plant that's kind of grown in the tropics. Uh, Hawaii is like a big place that it comes from, but it's, it has a numbing sensation on the tongue, but you have to drink the root in like a water, like coconut milk or something. And it gives you this really intense, relaxed feeling. And so people go to like kava bars. I know there's one in Portland there is, yeah. and sit around and, you know, drink kava instead of alcohol. And so I started, you know, drinking that from time to time and realized like, wow, every time I drink this, I feel really good. Like I can deal with my mood. I can deal with the depression and the anxiety. And so I wondered, well, if herbs can do this, why can't I just do herbs instead of drugs? You know, that was my kind of one, one solution for an ill mindset at the time, which has totally changed. But mm. So I, you know, started working with a naturopathic doctor at the recommendation of a friend and, you know, she kind of helped me connect the pieces of like, okay, you know, birth control might've been an instigator here. So I wanted to get off birth control. She helped me do that. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I did that, I started feeling a little bit better. And then I was like, well, let's get off of these antidepressants too. So she helped me do that over the span of several months. And, um, I had never before felt better. And I started really getting into herbalism and, um, and just using those for my symptoms instead. And I really found that to be much more empowering that I was able to choose my healthcare instead of just taking what was provided to me and not really having it work for me. Yeah. And it's, and, and we, I read it, I pre preach it, um, having this this medical system that works in the moment and not just when these symptoms are extreme and, mm -hmm. you know, just being able to take it day by day and really kind of look into what your body needs. Um, you worked with a naturopathic doctor when you were young. How did you find that doctor and how did you know that that, that was where you wanted to go? Yeah, that's a good question. So I didn't find my naturopathic doctor um, I didn't hear about naturopathic medicine actually mm -hmm. until, you know, I was about a year almost done with my undergrad. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, I was probably about, I, I spent six years in undergrad because I did two different degrees. So I was probably about like 21 when I found her and it was through the recommendation of a friend who knew about naturopathic medicine. And so I did some research and found one in the area and decided, well, let's give it a go. I want to see what this is like. I was on like the direct, you know, career path to go get, um, I wanted to get my PhD in immunology of all things at the time. Yeah. And so I was very much like conventionally oriented, you know, wanting to do the scientific route, be in a lab all the time. Um, but I wanted to see what this did for me. And gosh, in the span of even just six months, like my health completely transformed like everything I knew about health and disease everything I knew about myself um, yeah so she was the reason I was like you know I need to learn more about this you know why why do I want to go sit in a lab and device you know things for pharmaceutical companies when I could be doing this and like showing people how I was helped heal too so do you think that when you started to use naturopathic medicine or when you started to work with herbs and things like that, you actually started to listen to what your body needed as well. When did you develop that relationship with yourself? I think that's, that's something that um, awakens within us really slowly and over time. And, um, you know, I think that's different for everybody. Some people are really intuitive and really in touch with themselves at a young age. Mm. And that wasn't me. That wasn't me. I mean, I, I would, you know, take my pharmaceuticals and, you know, not really notice what they were doing to me. You know, now I could, you know, I haven't taken a pharmaceutical in a really long time, but I even just take a little bit of an herb and immediately I can feel the change within my own body. So I think that was just slowly awakening to what was happening to me. And as I discontinued off of the medications, tapping into the changes within my own body and realizing, oh my gosh, for the first time in eight years, I don't have brain fog. I was just so mm -hmm. used to having brain fog. I was so used to having, you know, chronic fatigue and then not having it was amazing. So yes, I think that's the, it's a huge part of listening to our bodies, tapping into that intuition and that awareness and using the med medicine that really resonates with us. And for some people, that might be conventional medications. Um, for other people, it's not. It all depends on the situation and what your body is telling you. Yeah. You described um, your healing um, as nature has all the tools that I could have ever need 
to heal myself and that it was empowering and this intri intrinsic wisdom of your body. And there's all this beautiful healing that you have done and that you have helped people do. And then there's this other side as I dove into kind of research what people are saying and what's happening. Um, there's this real big divide with um, people who think natural and naturopathic medicine is, is meaningless and almost harmful. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, on, on Forbes.com and uh, someone, a doctor who wrote um, that, you know, NDs don't have the proper education or experience to practice anything called medicine, which is ex so extreme. Um, I just really wanted to hear your comments on this and your thoughts around this really intense um, subject. Yeah, that's a big, big question and something that we face on a daily basis as naturopathic doctors, you know, especially wherever we practice, the climate around the medicine can be totally different. Um, but what, I mean, I think that comes back to like, what is medicine? You know, mm -hmm. what is medicine? I think it's different for everybody. You go to different parts of the world and medicine is completely different. In the U.S., we have this certain almost dogmatic approach to our medicine, you know, almost a fanatical zeal about what is medicine and what is not medicine. And to me, medicine is, is that which heals us. You know, medicine can be like the comfort of a friend. Medicine can be like having, you know, a dog around when you feel lonely. Medicine is that which heals. And natural medicine has been around for thousands upon thousands of years. And, you know, it wasn't until like, you know, it wasn't until conventional medicine, you know, came out with like the antibiotic, and, you know, these life-saving surgical procedures that suddenly it was seen as like the hero of medicine and everyone's like, this must be it. This must yeah. be it. And there is a time and place for that and it is needed and it's totally completely necessary as part of our healthcare system. But natural medicine wouldn't still be around today if it didn't work. I say that all the time. <laughs> I say that all the time. It's been around, it's stuck, it's uh -huh. here. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, part of, you know, the mindset. We need this like paradigm shift in our medical, in our healthcare system. We need to embrace both. And I know that's kind of like a broken record. I think people say that a lot, but it couldn't be further from the truth. You know, we get so attached to something, be it like the conventional way of thinking. And, you know, we run off with that thinking that is the one and true way. But science is like not black and white. Science is a whole big gray zone. It takes into the complexity of our being, you know, our mind, our body, our spirit. And we can't just be deduced to parts, you know. We can't just be deduced to like, you know, this cell is diseased or this organ is diseased. Let's remove it or let's find a drug that interacts in this way. And like, ta-da, everything's better. There's a time and place for that. But at the same time, you know, medicine is about, or should be about the holism. Like how do these tissues interact with each other? These organs interact. How do we interact with ourselves? How do we interact with the world around us and with other human beings? And I think that is a critical piece that conventional medicine and our scientific model um, is missing. Yeah. Well, to get to, you know, the main topic, the title of this conversation is finding the right naturopathic doctor for you, because there are people that might work more naturally with just energy or more naturally with um, herbs. But how do you, how would one start the process of finding um, someone to work with? Sure. Um, I'll go into that uh, in just a second. And I'm going to tie it into a little bit of what you asked about in the last question. Oh, okay, great. So, um, yeah, because I think it really kind of ties in. So naturopathic doctors, if they go to an accredited four-year school, receive, you know, the same biomedical and diagnostic skill training that MDs and DOs do. So, and we have, you know, our board exams that make sure that we fully ingrained that part into our education. So we learn, you know, our anatomy and physiology, biochemistry, all our ologies, like cardiology, endocrinology, you name it. Um, we learn about standard of care treatment, which is, you know, like the pharmaceutical approach. And for this condition, what would we do conventionally? Um, but we also learn all of our, you know, naturopathic modalities, botanical mm -hmm. medicine, homeopathy, nutrition, lifestyle, IV therapy, minor surgery, all of these things. And, um, you know, it's important to know that, we do receive training that allows us to be primary care providers in certain states. We're not licensed in every state, and there's only a few states like Oregon, Washington, Vermont, 
may be missing one, Montana, that allows us to be a primary care provider, just like an MD. So we can, you can come in, we can order your colonoscopy and mammogram, we can take care of your, you know, pharmaceutical medications and also do our naturopathic thing. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I mean, naturopathic medicine is based on a unifying principle, a unifying philosophy of vitalism, you know, that we have this vital force that enlivens us that nature has everything we need to heal ourselves, that we're intelligent, nature's intelligent, that we have the power to heal without the use of like synthetic or invasive means. Um, there are times when that is necessary though, and that's when we refer out of our scope and say, you need to see somebody for this. Um, with that being said, that's why so many people practice so differently because we do have that scope to practice in the primary care realm. Um, and we are trained that way. So you'll see providers, depending on the state that they're in, practicing mostly primary care with a little bit of you know, naturopathic medicine sprinkled in. They might be your primary care doctor, but tend more towards naturopathic medicine. You might see something floating around called um, functional medicine. That's mm -hmm. also a really hot button term this uh, for some reason right now, um, which you know kind of is best at picking up subclinical like lab markers and um, and biomarkers of chronic disease. So there are some naturopaths that do a lot in the realm of functional medicine. So, you know, they'll, they'll do a lot of lab testing. They might give you a lot of supplements. And then there's other naturopaths that tend more towards the roots and they don't really do much lab testing. They're more focused on nutrition, lifestyle, and, you know, some select um, herbs or something like that. And then, you know, there's a lot that just kind of fall in the middle. And a lot of them do different modalities. Some are doing prolotherapy right now. Some do a lot of IV therapy. Some have different procedures. So it's really important to, you know, if you have a certain way that you feel about your health care, like, I don't want to do a bunch to have my ND be covered by my insurance because some are only cash based and some states don't cover NDs with insurance. Mm -hmm. um, then it's important to kind of do that research and see if like your belief system matches up with their belief system and then you're going to get treated in the way that you want to be because everyone's so different, um, especially are, naturopathic doctors. Are there some like really just key questions? Is it, I mean, I would feel comfortable going in and really saying like, this is you know, where my heart is and this is what I'm looking for. Um, people are open to those questions. Um, and sometimes you just have to book an appointment to have that conversation. Are there any um, specific questions and that you think people would want to ask? Sure. That's a really good question. Um, one, a lot of ND clinics offer like complimentary or free um, discovery calls where you can call and just chat with them and see if you even feel like you jive. Mm -hmm. um, but as for like if you're feeding face to face or calling them and you have questions, one, I would ask, um, and you can often dig this up on their website, but their training is really important to make sure that they went to one of the accredited naturopathic colleges, either in the United States or Canada, because there's a lot of um, people out there calling themselves naturopaths. And granted, I don't wanna take anything away from their training, but they weren't trained in the way we were trained. They weren't trained as primary care providers. They didn't go through a four-year accredited program um, or a complete a residency or anything like that. So you wanna make sure that they went to one of the schools <clears throat> you also want to ask about their philosophy because I think that's really important. Like, what is your healing philosophy? What is your, you know, care philosophy? You said mine right at the beginning of, of the show. And that's, you know, what I believe. But there are plenty of naturopathic doctors out there that have a similar one, slightly different or totally different. Mm -hmm. And just asking, you know, what is your philosophy around healing and what primarily, um, you know, what can primarily do you treat? Because a lot of NDs will say, I treat these conditions. Well, I don't treat disease. I don't treat conditions. I treat the person. And that's kind of the root of our medicine. Yeah. Great. Having those are, I think, super important. And I do know that there are people out there that have the same background that you have. And I have a similar background um, in, you know, eating fast food and going to the doctor and getting pills. And sometimes that is a hard transition because we feel so safe with yeah. Western medicine and what it has done for us. And so taking those steps and reaching out and just having that conversation with a naturopathic doctor is mm -hmm. so important. So anyone who is looking for that or questioning that, go and um, experience, experience that. Um, I wanted to dive into something I'm super excited about and passionate about, and that is Maya Abdominal Massage. Mm -hmm. um, if you could give, uh, just tell us what it is. 
Okay, absolutely. I'm super passionate about it too. <laughs> Changed my life. Um, so my abdominal massage is an external massage over the abdomen and over like the low back area, all of the ligaments and everything that lead to the abdomen um, in order to reposition the organs um, in the abdomen. So our reproductive organs like our uterus, our ovaries. So in men, that could be the prostate because they can get this too. Um, the digestive organs and the bladder. So what it does is it helps reposition them in order to improve the blood flow, the lymphatic flow, the flow of the nervous system through those tissues and those organs in order to optimize their health and their functioning. And I think a lot of people are like, how does my uterus, you know, get out of balance or how does it get out of alignment? But it's really actually common if you've ever been to, you know, have a gyne exam and you're told, oh, you have like a retroflex uterus, you know, that seems pretty common these days. Granted, it could be like an anatomical variant, but at the same time, our uterus and the ligaments that attach to it, they move around quite a bit more than we think. And so a uterus, you know, it should be a little bit more forward flexed towards our bladder, but it can move to the side, it can move back, you know, leading more to like back pain during menses. And so all of these symptoms that can come from, you know, a uterus that doesn't have adequate blood and lymphatic flow or is improperly positioned can be things like pain, you know, pelvic pain, endometriosis can actually cause misalignment of the uterus due to the adhesions pulling. Um, you know, menstrual irregularities can be really common, cramping with menses, um, hormonal irregularities. So fertility is a big one too. A lot of, you know, women don't realize the impact of a misaligned uterus on their ability to get pregnant. Um, one, because, you know, it's not conducive to, to holding an embryo, but at the same time, you know, hormones can get really out of whack if our ovaries, you know, feel a little cramped up in there. So I love my abdominal massage. I love using it on women. You can use it on men too for things like prostate issues, infertility, um, erectile dysfunction as well. Uh, but it's just a really great way to support the body. And you can also, you know, tell your patients to go home and practice it on themselves, which is really nice. So not only is someone doing this for you and helping you heal, but then you're taking the power into your own hands and able to help yourself heal. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're experiencing discomfort, you're experiencing confusion, why is this happening to me? I've always had to deal with this. This is something that is so important. Please go talk to someone who uses this therapy. Uh, it has changed my life personally. Um, and you know, there's other, I don't know, <laughs> good side effects as well. Like it helped me with my digestion. It helped me with my calmness. I mean, the, the act of it, of receiving this massage mm -hmm. as well was so beautiful and so calming. And that was also partly to you because you are such an amazing practitioner and so knowledgeable. Um, um, so I was hoping you could kind of give us a little idea of like what it looks like if we could take care of ourselves at home and maybe just an idea of something that we can start to feel or even start to understand in our own bodies. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the simple thing comes down to just, you know, tuning in to the way, um, the way we feel in our abdomen. So our digestion, the health of our bladder, the health of our uterus, you know, tuning into our menstrual cycles and just being able to chart those and seeing how they're changing from day to day based on, or from month to month based on how we're taking care of ourselves, our stress levels, all of that. Um, but a really nice thing to do is to be able to offer yourself some self-care massage. So I know right now it's probably really hard to show, um, but what you want to do, I'll go ahead and stand up a little bit. Maybe this would be helpful. You want to be able to massage the abdomen in this um, clockwise or counterclockwise direction, counterclockwise if you're looking from the other way. Um, but that is the normal flow of the stool in the GI tract. And that can be really helpful for one, promoting digestion and, you know, correct paris or proper peristalsis and movement of the GI system um, and helping with things like constipation and diarrhea. Constipation really doesn't do well for our reproductive system. It can really mm. make it challenging. Um, but then that also helps with the blood and lymphatic flow to the system. And there's also techniques that you can use to massage your lower abdomen and your upper abdomen because the upper abdomen kind of in the area of the solar plexus can get really tight on us. We store so much in there, so many emotions, so much tension. And so massaging even just in small little circles over our solar plexus can really help, you know, bring us back into our power, root us back into our body and create a sense of, of calm and ease. 
I just, I love, I love that. Thank you for sharing those techniques. And if you try them, let me know how it goes and what you're feeling. And if you tune in, if you're experiencing anything new. Um, one thing that I always come back to um, with, you know, holistic healing and this ancient way of healing and, and even my abdominal why do you think it's not more widely used? It's so helpful. It changes lives. It saves lives. Why do you think it's just not, you know, out there and available and people knowing about it? Yeah, I think that's changing. So that's what's really good. I think more and more people are discovering the medicine, are finding out ways to care for themselves that, you know, don't involve taking a pill. Um, I think that that the number of people practicing uh, on patients with my abdominal therapy and other similar therapies, the number of practitioners is growing. So that's allowing you know, more access to more people. But I think that I think part of the reason is that we just didn't grow up that way, right? You know, some people grew up, like I said earlier, with like grandmothers who took them out into the garden or like, you know, this herb is helpful for this. And, you know, they had more of that connection, but we are increasingly you know, disconnected from nature, disconnected from ourselves, disconnected from each other. You know, we live in this like isolating social media age where we have all this knowledge, but that's at the loss of our internal knowledge, like our internal wisdom. And, you know, that, that deprives us of some of these things. But I think, you know, more and more people are coming on to the power of this. More people are reconnecting to nature, reconnecting to themselves. And, you know, Things like uh, my abdominal massage, you know, that originated in, in Belize. Rosita Arvigo kind of brought that from Belize to the United States. And so it just takes time to spread. But we didn't have, you know, those healing practices as part of our childhood, like I said. And I, you know, it's, it takes time to, to learn how to reconnect. Do you, as a practitioner and, and working with so many modalities, um, do you see any new patterns emerging with people who are coming with symptoms or experiences that they're maybe not new, but you know, what, do you, what are you seeing? Sure. I think the big one, and many can vouch for this, is just the increase in chronic disease. You know, we have so many fewer, aside from now, so many fewer op, um, instances of like acute disease emerging, you know, people being, you know, really sick from, you know, diseases of the past. Now we tend to have more of what's called chronic disease. So diseases that really aren't as easily fixed with a pill. You know, you can be really sick with an acute bacterial infection, take an antibiotic and you're better. With things like chronic disease, you know, diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune diseases, things like that thyroid disease, all these endocrine imbalances, we're realizing that it's not as simple as taking a pill and it goes away, that there's something underlying the problem that is, is much deeper than that. You know, I, I like to always go back to like our number one cause of disease is our disconnect with nature, you know, our disconnect from, you know, our outer nature, you know, the earth and, and our environment, as well as our inner nature, like our, our own purpose, Yeah. you know, and we Voices that are out of alignment with that. You know, we pollute our environments. You know, we do things that are hurting the earth, but rebound, they're also hurting us. So environmental toxins are huge right now. Mm -hmm. That totally disrupts what I call the neuroendocrine immune system, or what is called, not just me. Well, um, and then your nervous system, yeah, our hormones, our immune system. And so right now, everyone is pretty sick, you know? Everyone has some sort of chronic issue going on, whether that's just like, oh, I have diarrhea every day and I don't really know why, but otherwise I feel great, or I'm just tired all the time, or my thyroid's like a little off. Mm -hmm. And so, everyone to a certain degree has a chronic illness and that can be physical and increasingly mental emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, you look around and the diagnoses for mental health conditions and uh, are on the rise, you suicides. And I mean, these are really scary and terrible topics, but I think it just shows the fact of, you know, how increasingly disconnected we are. So taking the time to experience, again, yourself with these my abdominal techniques, mm -hmm. tuning in, finding a doctor that serves you and your needs, and mm -hmm. really what, what are you looking for? How do you want to change your life? What steps mm -hmm. do you want to take? And hopefully, um, Shannon, you've shared some wonderful things and someone hears this and takes a step that they've been wanting to take. 
I hope so. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. And you can re-listen to this and more by joining the Green Tree community at greentreeayurveda.com forward slash access. And if you have a topic you're interested in or want to hear more about, if you are a holistic health leader in your community and you would like to have a conversation with me, please email me at greentree, oh, excuse me, hello at greentreeayurveda.com. Thank you so much for joining me. Till next time.